Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 24 of the WMA5 series here on the channel of uh, Modern Day UFC. Save as it is our ESPN Plus card that is happening in New York. Or as uh, if you're a fan of uh, what we do in the shadows, New York City. <laughs> this is uh, just a Gaethje and Gregor Gillespie is our main event for that. Um, you know, as far as that's going to be a fun main event, though. Obviously, Justin Gaethje, a uh, yeah, top five light weight in the world. I mean, arguably top. I mean, I mean, for where he's at right now, I guess technically he'd be a little. Yeah, fifth would probably be a good spot for him, maybe even fourth. It's kind of, it's wild, you know, how, how talented the lightweight division is. But before we get into that uh, card, we uh, do have a couple of pieces of news. So the main thing, uh, Jennifer Maya retired at 35, which is kind of shocking because here in real life, she's still kicking it. You know, she's still getting after it here in 2023. So uh, that sucks as far as to lose out on Jennifer Maya. So, the Ultimate Fighter recap. So, the first semi-final saw Zamutsky beat Nick Maximov. And then, the second semi-final saw Carlos Matos get the win over Desko Tadrovic. So, it, of course, will be a Team Bonner finals. Because, you know, it was a Team Bonner semi-finals all the way around. Uh, that fight, as far as when that's going to take place, uh, the plan... Is, uh, because I want to say, are they, yeah, okay, so they're ready to go. I had a feeling they were. Is, yeah, they are ready to go. So the plan is, let's just go into the, so let's see. So this, um, ESPN Plus card potentially, or the prelim, like the main event in the prelim, or even just somewhere on even the actual prelim itself, maybe even the opener of the prelim so everybody can tune in to see it. Obviously, because it's a pay-per-view, you figured everyone's going to be wanting to see the prelims for it. So that's the plan. Uh, what's funny enough is, here in uh, Japan, we're going to have uh, Forrest and Stefan Bonner be on commentary for this. So I feel like it'd be a fun little thing to kind of have them kind of, you know, talking about the season, maybe even have a season uh, kind of recap, air... Uh, maybe on, on, you know, on ESPN Plus, kind of like a uh, prelude into the actual Fight Night card that's happening in Japan. Because obviously it's going to be at a weird hour, so I just feel like it would be a fun thing to do. To kind of start it, let's see. If there's 13, 14 episodes of it, and you know each one's about an hour, you could probably get away with it doing around 5 o'clock in the evening. And then by the time the card actually comes up, you know it, it should be good to go. But yeah, I mean, that's um, just an idea, you know, just as far as uh, if I were, you know, if this was, you know, if you had that type of control, that would definitely be something I'd do because you want to get everyone kind of amped up for it. Again, you know, that's kind of the thing is you got to take time off and uh, having a couple months of fight camp is a good idea. Let's actually just go ahead and make that happen if we can see where, where everybody, oh, they're not there. Oh, no, I was in the lightweight because I was thinking of uh, <laughs> Justin Gaethje. And there's Carlos. Yeah, let's see. Where's... There he is. Oh. It's a bit skit. There we go. Uh, funny enough, yeah, as far as... Uh, he is 4-1. As far as Zemitsky. Or I guess Zemitsko, rather. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's close, though, on the betting lines. Minus 110, plus, oh, yeah, both, you know, minus 110s. Alrighty. Yeah, well, I'll we'll set it. There on the prelim. Coo, coo, coo. Alrighty, oh, wrong prelim. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, that's an easy fix, though. Let's see. Yep, there we go, move it to this one. Perfect. I guess we could have it on that fight night one, but that'd be kind of weird. Because we'd probably want that on the main card. Anyways, I don't want that to be, like, that's kind of a death nail. You know, Tough is already in a weird spot, obviously, in real life. Because now, you know, nobody gives a shit about Tough. It's all about the uh, contender, ser uh, contender Series, which, obviously, it'd be nice to be able to do that, but uh, we can't. Uh, weirdly enough, um, at least in this mod, you can't. You might be able to, like, I'm assuming on an updated mod, where, uh, you know, kind of the Dana White Contender Series. It was a thing by this point, but it really didn't start really getting going until mainly 
once COVID hit and everyone just was kind of like, oh, we need, like, a bunch of cards to take place at the Apex, and that was kind of the, the go-to there. But there have been, you know, I mean, shit, you can kind of look back all the way through, uh, if you go to uh, looking for a fight and then into the Dana White Contender Series, kind of that whole tie-in, but uh, enough about that. We can get into the show now. Justin Gaethje and Gregor Gillespie, Gillespie is our main event at 155, but our co-main event, a couple of veterans and a couple of guys that have been around for a long time have battled in different divisions, and as far as they finally, well, at least Michael Johnson's mainly stayed at 145, sometimes he's fought at 155, but Michael Johnson taking on J uh, Frankie Edgar as Frankie... Veteran for sure. I mean, God, what his first UFC was probably, yeah, God, it was 67, like in February of 2007. While, of course, Michael Johnson was on the, that was the Jonathan Brooks, or, uh, yeah, that was uh, the Jonathan Brookins season. So, yeah, GSP and Hughes, yeah, if I remember correctly. Oh, it was Koscheck, that's right. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. It's all coming back. Yeah, that was uh, December of 2010. Wow. As far as, so, yeah, veterans for sure. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's got the craziest resume ever. When you look at some of these names he's beaten. Dustin Poirier, Edson Barbosa, Lozon, Gleison Tebow, Tony Ferguson. And then he's, you know, five gay cheese, fuck, Khabib. He beat Artem Lobov, too. Uh, he's fought uh, Benio Darius, he's fought Nate Diaz, he, he beat Novin Galar too. It's wild, wild, wild resume. Not a lot of people can say they beat Dustin Poirier, uh, Tony Ferguson, and Edson Barbosa. Not a lot of guys can say that, and even Artem Lobov, to be fair. Uh, but at this point, yeah, I mean, obviously age has gotten into him as far as 34 years old. Him at featherweight is, is a unique change as well for him. And also for Frankie, I mean, Frankie at 145 is so weird. Throws me off every time I see that. Because obviously at 5'8", that's, uh, that's a tough division to be in at that height. Yeah, I mean, when you're fighting Yair Rodriguez, Cub Swanson, Holloway, Chan Sung Jung, which is crazy, he beat the, you know, as far as Cub Swanson and Yair Rodriguez, he fought Ryan Ortega too. Pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. But obviously a, a guy that is used to the bright lights, a guy that... Um, he just, hey, I remember he got destroyed by poor Chan Sung Jung, though, uh, back in December. Which I want to say this was in, yeah, this was in Singapore, if I remember correctly. From that uh, ESPN Plus card. Yeah, I mean, 38. It's probably his last hurrah, one would assume. Uh, but yeah, we, we also got to look at uh, kind of this year, as far as... We always forget to click this. Uh, but yeah, actually, Gregory Galepsi is the favorite... That's shocking, to be honest. I mean, Gillespie's solid. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it's Justin Gaethje. Uh, Justin Gaethje's it. He, they got him at eight right now. Which, I, yeah, no. He's definitely top five guy. Obviously, at this time, he's coming off a 3-5 win streak when he's knocked out both Ed Barbosa and Donald Cerrone in the first round. He also knocked out James Fick in the first round. So, his last three performances. And he also beat Michael Johnson at, uh, at the tough redemption finale. By, uh, you know, TKO. He's only went to the distance one time, and that was when uh, the World Series of Fighting against Melvin Gillard back in uh, November 2014. Other than that, he has kicked into high gear. Of course, he avenges that loss to Poirier in real life. He lost to Eddie Alvarez at uh, 218, which yeah, was his first pay-per-view. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, obviously a guy that brings it. One of the more exciting guys on the roster. Should be a fun fight, and, you know, for Gregory uh, Gillespie, high-level, you know, Division One national champion, four-time All-American, pretty fucking stout wrestling. Very, very good wrestling. Um, but as far as what I've seen from him is if somebody like Justin Gaethje, who has a wrestling background but is able to stand up with him, it's probably going to give him some problems. He got knocked out by Kevin Lee in the first round back in November, which was his first loss in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, this is probably... Yeah, this is a great matchup, though. Both guys are in the top ten. You got a New York native in uh, Gregory uh, Gillespie. And then for Justin Gaethje, though, he is the highlight. That is as uh, 
as true of a nickname as any. That man. But that should be a fun fight. Should be a fun one. And then I'd like to see the odds for this one. Yeah, Frank Edgar's the nice size favorite. One, uh, yeah, 250. That's, uh, yeah, that's tough. Both guys weighed in 145, right on the dot. 19th to 15th on the featherweight scene. Of course, Michael Johnson has lost a good bit. But he's got a lot of fights under his belt. And he's fought a lot of tough dudes. Now, obviously, the same could be said for Frank Edgar. This is a fun fight, though. You know, when you throw some veterans like that against each other, it's always fun. Yeah, it makes it a more, ma you know, even matchmaking. Because a lot of times they just feed the old guys to the up-and-coming dudes. Then uh, for Michael Olaszewski... Oh, oh, I knew I was going to fuck that up. Alexic... Oh, my... Yeah, just Michael. <laughs> as far as Michael the Hammer. The uh, Polish kickboxer. Taking on Alexander Rajic as a, a kickboxing background. There's also two great kickboxers. They both like heavyweights as well. They're ranked. Rajic is 8th. And uh, Michael is 18th. So you can see a heavy favorite. Pretty big jump in uh, the betting line. What I liked about this fight. Both styles stylistically made sense. You know, kickboxers. Uh, but the, the Hammer himself. The Polish Hammer. He just lost to OSP by uh, Von Flutroke. Which is tough. Yeah, obviously... Yay to see that. Crazy went the distance with Khalil Roundtree, though. He's had, you know, he's had some good fights along the way. He's an exciting guy. You know, gets a lot of first-round finishes as well if you're going to try to stand up with him. And I'm assuming Alexander Rodjick will do just that. You know, he's, he's a long, you know, six you know, six foot five light heavyweight. Great kickboxing background. Went the distance with Volkan. Lost by split decision back in December. Yeah, he beat Devin Clark. He's beaten Justin Leddit. He's beaten Jimmy Manawa. Knocked him out, 47 seconds of the first round. So both guys are coming off of uh, you know first round knockouts, at least from their last win. But they're also coming off of losses as well in their career. So should be a fun fight. I mean, both guys stylistically match up well. Wouldn't be surprised if that one doesn't go out of the first round. And now Jermaine Sterling, the uh, Newark native, taking on Ronnie Yana. Yeah, yeah, as far as uh, the 25th bantamweight in the world, a three-time world jiu-jitsu champion as well as an Abu Dhabi champion. Yeah, I mean, he went through the UFC once the WC merger took place. Fought featherweight, which he was too short to fight a featherweight. Fought a bantamweight. That's kind of more of his weight class anyways. Hasn't really fought. Like, Luke Sanders was a big win. As far as uh, he beat uh, Ali Alcantara back in uh, March as far as in, in uh, not in real life, in the mod here, which is huge. Uh, first round finish. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, now the other Contra, I mean, you know, that was kind of his, I wouldn't say his, his last fight for us, but, yeah, I mean, pretty much was our, his last fight with us, but, uh, he's fought Matthew Lopez, he fought Chad Mendez in the past, okay, um, uh, Mizuaki, back at WC, yeah, he fought a lot of the tough WEC guys, you know, Joseph Benavidez, Eddie Winland, yeah, just, uh, it's been a while, though, since he really fought that kind of tough guy. Well, Ricky Simon's tough. I can't say that. I went the distance with him, too. Yeah, so as far as... Uh, now that he's ranked as well, 25th, 22nd in the UFC. Uh, you know, he's taking on Aljo. Of course, we all know yeah, what Aljo becomes. But he got stopped by the Sandman uh, back in February on the ESPN Plus card. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do after losing to somebody like Sandhagen, where... Obviously, Sandman's got you know, great stand-up, but he was really able to uh, stay with him for the most part. I mean, a lot of takedowns for Alan Jermaine Sorry, two out of three, just kind of stand-up-wise, had the advantage. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, you know, I think that 30-27 is a bit outrageous. 29-28 was kind of the right score from what I remember. He's beaten uh, Johnny Eduardo. He's also beaten Takuya Mizuaki as he's uh, beat... He's also beaten uh, Pedro Munoz, Jimmy Rivera, Cody Stallman, Brett Jones, uh, Brett Jones, and Reno Barraro, Gusto Mendez. It's crazy, a couple of losses, you know, by split decision to uh, Rafael Scunia and Brian Caraway. And then old fucking Marlon Moraes <laughs> knocked them out. But yeah, I mean, th this is uh, a Division Three wrestler who, I mean, was out wrestling a fucking Olympic gold medalist in Henry Suda in real life. So just kind of, sometimes, you know, sure that background 
works, but you know, obviously MMA grappling is a little different than every other type of grappling. You know, you're talking about strikes, you're talking about a cage as well, pressing up against the cage and you use your body, so it's a lot that can happen. And he's really great at backpacking people. And if he can do that tier two, uh, Yanni, he's in, you know, going to be in big trouble. But if Yanni can get a win, boy, talk about a major victory to beat uh, the Funk Master here in New York. Then Marina Rodriguez taking on Angela Hill. And it's uh, Angie, of course, uh, Miss a Angela Hill from Brooklyn, New York. As uh, looking to get a win as another New York native. But, uh, man, Marina Rodriguez, that's a tough fight. It's 12-0-2, hasn't lost. And as far as 19th straw weight in the world, 13th for Angela Hill. She is the underdog in this fight. It's not uh, too often you see that where the uh, higher-ranked person... I guess lower ranked person <laughs> is uh, is the favorite, but yeah, she's beaten uh, Jessica Aguilar. She had two draws, two majority draws, and uh, this one's probably gonna go the distance. You know, Angela Hill, she's uh, she's got a gas tank on her. She's not really looking for a finish, I would say. I mean, it'd be nice for her, but she just doesn't have really the punching power at her size. Obviously, uh, you know, pretty ridiculous record at at sometimes. But she did beat Hannah Clifford. She knocked her out, too. Uh, it was a 2KO finish, which was shocking enough. So, you never know. And as far as she jumped up from 20 to 13th, a lot could still happen. She's, um, I mean, she's got a high-quality amount of strikes. You know, she's landed, I believe, the most strikes in strawweight history. I believe she has also one of the... I believe she is now the sole leader of kind of the longest, uh, uh, I guess, octagon time in, uh, in the women's strawweight division as well. Veteran for sure and is able to stand and bang with you. She's tough to put away. That should be a fun, fun opener there. And then John Dotson in uh, potentially his last fight here against Brian Keller as um, both guys twenty, you know, twenty and ten, twenty and twelve, looking for their twenty-first victory. Another New York native, another you know, kind of two veteran talents battling it out. But yeah, Dotson. Yeah, I mean the LFA contract is coming in. If he loses. We probably won't re-sign him as much as I love John Dotson. I feel like his time has kind of come. You know, he'll be 9-8 and eight if he loses in the UFC. Even though he, you know, knocked out fucking Dillashaw and won the uh, Tough 14 tournament. Definitely more of a flyweight. You know, 5-3 is crazy to be a bantamweight. You're going to take on some top, top-level bantamweights now. Guys are getting bigger. It just kind of is what it is. And we have a featherweight, normally a featherweight, you know, fighting here at uh, Bantamweight and Brian Boom Keller as far as, um, he's, uh, uh, kind of, it's funny enough, you know, he, with, um, I would say like him, also Angela Hill, kind of people that have transitioned into combat sports a little later in life. You just, uh, you got a win back in January, your name decision win over uh, O'Day Osben. Osborne, rather, excuse me, as far as, uh, that was the first ever show at uh, the McGregor Cowboy 246 event. He lost to Montel Jackson and John Lineker before that, but he beat uh, Reina Barraro. He also beat Alcantara as well back at uh, UFC 12, uh, 212. He won by a guillotine in the first round as well. Lost to Cheeto in the first round. Yeah, a couple of first round losses, mainly submission based, but he also got knocked out, which John Lineker knocks people the fuck out. Just kind of is what it is. A tough break. Uh, yeah, definitely submission de uh, defense is kind of his, his uh, weakest point. But, you know, he's going to have a pretty good size advantage over John Dotson. But Dotson's still a favorite. And that's going to be the main event in the prelim. Is uh, Capoeira. Uh, as far as... Uh, oh, and I knew I was going to... Oh, I always... I fuck this one up too. Or just uh, Zaleski <laughs> Dos Santos against Randy Rude Boy Brown. 13-3 and three is the New York native boxing background, Muay Thai background for Dos Santos. Uh, Brazilian native. Pretty good stand-up. Uh, you know, as far as he's able to... Uh, he's a tough guy to put away, to be honest. That's kind of why I liked him. Even though he got knocked out back in March in the first round to Alexei Konechko, which, that's a tough guy. I mean, he's knocked out Sean Strickland. He's you know, beaten Max Griffin. He uh, went the distance with Nicholas Dalby as well. Really the only guy that finished him up to that point was the leech, and the leech is awesome, so it was kind of like, all right, let's see how tough this guy is after the bounce back, but he lost in the first round, got knocked out, got caught by Alexei Konechko, he's a tough dude to put away, you know, and um, 
man, this, this is going to be exciting prelim, because a guy with a, that good of a record in 7-3 on the prelim is pretty nuts. But yeah, Jamaican, uh, as far as I, as far as raised on the, uh, raised in Jamaica, born in New York City, is on a 3-5 win streak. He's fought guys like Bam Bam Barena. He's fought Mickey Gall. He's fought uh, Bilal Muhammad. He's fought uh, uh, Wally Al Alves as well, won by a triangle. Another guy who's, who's getting a lot of wins as of late by uh, finishes. Yeah, finished in Kenan Song back at 249 at the Ferguson Khabib card. He's awesome. I mean, what can you say? He's got a, a great style. Matchup-wise, it's a good fight. I think both guys are looking for a chance to potentially maybe knock into the rankings. Both guys, you know, 7-3 and three in the UFC as well. It's a big fight. Big fight for both guys. Obviously, Randy Brown's got a little bit more on the line fighting in, in his hometown. but uh, And also, he's got a team as well with him. So, yeah, Randy Brown's probably the smart betting favorite. As Gokan Saki, the kickboxing Isason, taking on slow Mike Rodriguez. As Mike, 10-5, and five, he's here to lose to <laughs> the... I mean, two-time Muay Thai champion, a K1 World Grand Prix 2006 finalist, one, and also was a finalist in the uh, K1 World Grand Prix in 2008. First ever Turkish fighter to be the K1 tournament title winner. He's also a former glory light heavyweight kickboxing champion. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. They... You know, they kind of fucked him. I mean, Khalil Round 3 is a great matchup. He's, you know, awesome guy to have him fight. But he couldn't really give him another guy to fight. Because he's he's up there in age. It's not... It's not like Alex Pereira, who's still a little bit younger. 36. Obviously, when he started, a little bit, you know, on the younger side. But then, once kind of COVID happened, that also kind of threw a hitch in it. But he's awesome. I mean, he's a hell of a kickboxer. One of the best in the world. Especially at uh, light heavyweight. I always felt like light heavyweight might not be his weight class for at least MMA. We'll see though. You know, as far as... Because a six foot light heavyweight, it's okay. But you want to be a little bigger than that. You know, like Mike Rodriguez, 6'3". You know, pretty big. He is 1-2 and two in the UFC as well. He just lost in the first round back in uh, December to Danyon Jung. Who's very tough. He lost to Devin Clark as well. Is I mean, as far as he... It's a pretty good boxer is kind of why we brought him in there. He's not a good wrestler. He's going to stand there with him. I hope, at least. If he tries to take him down, that would kind of suck. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. I get it. You know, you probably don't want to stand there and, and strike with a fucking glory kickboxer. I get it. But it would be nice for Gokan uh, Zaki to get a win. But they're both at minus 110. So it's close on the betting line. We shall see. It's Billy Kwanda Quandertello, as far as against T.J. Brown, as the New York native, and Billy, Billy Q. He is, of course, 1-0 in, in his UFC career. Won at uh, ESPN7 uh, at the Overeem uh, Rose Strike card back in December. To get to, you know, as far as a New York native again, fighting on the prelim in his hometown. Both guys know teams. Uh, both, you know, as far as relatively same age. T.J. Brown... From uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, he lost in his debut to Jordan Griffin back in February of uh, this year, of uh, 2020. He lost to a Kimura in the second. So we'll see how he does against Billy Q. Then Roxanne Mataferi in her potential last fight, 37, up there in age. We gave her a bit of a gimme in uh, Melinda Fabian, the Hungarian. Uh, as far as she's going to be a flyweight here, Roxanne Mataferi. Yeah, of course, lost uh, in real life. She beats, you know, Macy Barber in a shocking upset. But here in the mod, she lost uh, via armbar in the second round. Came off a loss to Jennifer Maya. Crazy, she beat Antonia Shevchenko by split decision. And uh, she also won at the Tough 27 finale card. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously someone that, uh, God, you know, when she retired, obviously a... Uh, Someone that is just a, an all-around great person, as far as maybe kind of not... You're not going to see, like, a fight highlight reel. Probably Roxanne Bonaferi anytime soon, but... Her beating Macy Barber is definitely the biggest kind of career highlight for her, and also being, like, a, you know, woman's in, you know, MMA pioneer. She fought all over the world. Fought in Jewels. Uh, she fought Strike Force. Uh, she fought, yeah, of course, UFC, Invicta. 
all over, and I mainly was a school teacher in Japan, you know, as far as fight as well. She is a, a heavy favorite, and that kind of shows you how bad Melinda Fabian is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a two-time IKF Kemba World Champion. Good striker. And I kind of, that's why I, I put her in there against Roxy Amatafari, because if she could strike the way she did, she beat Hannah Goldie the fuck up, and I thought she was going to get destroyed by Hannah Goldie. So, you never know. Yeah, you never know as far as um, she's a little younger, a little bigger, too. Fine, yeah, they're about the same size. Actually, yeah, Roxanne's one inch taller. It's going to be a good fight, I, I actually think. So we'll see how that uh, plays out. That's Galepsi. It's finished four of his last five opponents. Sixth time the Gaethje's made admitted a UFC event. Second time for Galepsi as a Gaethje. Three out of his last five fights have been won by knockout. I mean, I'm back in Gaethje. I'm with Jim here. I, you know, he's the higher-ranked fighter. It's a better stand-up guy. I think he's got the wrestling defense to stop him. We'll see. We shall see. Michael, the menace, Johnson, and Frankie, the answer, Edgar. It's crazy. Frank Edgar's fifth, and Michael Johnson is 19th, but he's got a huge reach advantage. I wouldn't say he's a better wrestler. Frankie's, you know, scrappy. He's not going to give up out there. He's going to you know, fight for everything he's got. He's a guy that's been down before and has come back in some pretty dramatic ways. It's going to be a tough guy to put away. But so is Michael Johnson. And it's um, Michael, the hammer. Alisic. I tried it again now, but that's, that definitely is not it. Against Alexander Rajic. So Rajic is the you know, eighth heavy in the light heavyweight division. Michael's 18th. He is the heavy favorite, is Michael. Oh, never mind. He's a significant weight advantage. I read that wrong. Is it? Uh, Rajic is the big favorite. Yeah, makes sense. Should be a fun fight, though. Both guys, great styles. Um, just as far as Rogers, just way bigger. Austrian uh, kickboxer as well. He's a big motherfucker. Yanni Yaya against the Funkmaster. Aljamain Sterling. Sterling's on three of, three of his last five fights by decision. Even though he's 10th on the bantamweight, uh, as far as rankings, Yanni matches up with him pretty well. He's finished four of his last five opponents. He looks to get finishes, whereas kind of Aljamain, not so much. It's a, you know, slight favorite on the Blurcast that picks. Should be a good fight. And then Marina Rodriguez against Angela over a hill kill. Rodriguez is the favorite on the Blurcast that picks when she is, uh, ranked lower than Angela Hill. So we'll see if she's looking to jump into the top 15, maybe even higher, if she kind of smokes Angela Hill there. And then John, the magician, Dotson against Brian Boom Keller as, uh, yeah, I mean, Dotson. This, uh, he might go out with a win. Or he gets put out in a pretty sad fashion and he'll go on to the LFA. Pretty sad. It sucks because he's a great... I, I love John Dotson, but at this point, it's just time for a new change of scenery. You know, he's been here since 2011. If he loses here, his last one would be a split decision win over Pedro Munoz and then a unanimous decision win over Eddie. But yeah, just his last finish was 2016. It was during the Fox era, too, so it's it's been a while. The fight game comes at you fast. And at 5-3 again, like, it's just... The game's changed, you know. It's a tough, tough, tough business. I th Bare Knuckle was kind of his best avenue, to be honest, because he's a hell of a boxer. He's fast, throws a lot of great strikes. He, he's actually really good at that. I, I kind of think he should do that more often now. Uh, as far as in... Uh, Zaleski Dos Santos and Randy Rude Boy Brown both have finished three of the last five opponents. This should be a fun fight. Should be a fun finish in that one. Randy Brown, heavy favorite. Should be a good one. They're on the prelim. And then Gokan Saki against Slow Mike Rodriguez. The Rebel himself is the favorite. No surprise there. Even though he hasn't won in a hot minute, he hasn't fought in a hot minute either. You know, his last fight was 2018. And then Billy Quantantillo uh, against TJ Downtown Brown. But now Brown's the favorite, even though uh, Billy Q's got the 5-inch reach. Interesting. Then Roxanne, the happy warrior of Mataferi. It's Melinda Fabian again. Mataferi being the heavy favorite is just kind of shocking, to be honest. I never thought I'd utter those words there in 2020, but here we are. And so, yeah, I mean, the fight begins. Steve Mazzagatti, I guess, 2023, but here for this fight, it beats still 2020. Uh, Steve Mazzagatti, referee, she's also got a fight camp and a uh, syndicate MMA. This fight begins. They come together and strike. They both miss. Fabian misses the 1-2 there. 
lot of fair using a body kick, but uh, gets buried away. Trying for the body kick, rather. Combination ends with a kick to the legs, fails the land for Mata Fairy. Fabian grabs her up in the clinch here. Eh, trying to suck her under the guard. Wow. So, uh, I mean, this, I feel like this is Mata Fairy. Well, never mind. She has full on swept her and now is in full mount. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, um, I mean, Roxanne Mata Fairy. It's nice knowing you. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Melinda Fabian sucks her into her guard, sweeps her, gets full mount off the sweep, and then gets an armbar finish in the first round. Everybody watch out. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, Roxanne Manafari retires. That's for the best. And, uh, yeah, I mean, god damn. What a win. What a start. And, uh, Billy Q against TJ Brown. As, uh, we'll see what Billy can do. We can make it back-to-back -back upsets. Her beans are free. Cage side judges here. We go. It's Billy Q gets a loud ovation. They touch gloves. Standing trade strikes. Nothing really happening. Brown with the exchange of strikes. Billy fight, uh, he faints one way, throwing him off balance, badly exposed, catches him with a nice straight right hand. Yeah, Billy's a pretty good guy, stand-up wise. And Brown's trying to get some wrestling, yeah, that's probably for the best. I mean, Billy's a great all-around dude, though, I mean, he's a tough guy to take down. So far, he's lighting him up strikes-wise, there's a right cross. Standing, trading, nothing really happening. Billy Q moving around the cage. It's off target with a jab, connects with the right hand. Use on the left jab now. Right hand's absorbed on the gloves. They meet in the center. There comes the left jab. Misses the round roundhouse kick. Now as uh, Billy Q finds a way past his opponent's guard and lands a sharp one too. They stay in trade, but all the shots are either off target or safely dealt with. Billy Q now lands the jab and then catches them with a the right hook. There's a now they're meeting in the center now. Counters the right hand with a left hand. Stepping forward now. Look at the strike. There's a jab in the exchange. Left jab scores with a right head kick. Didn't rock him though. Didn't even drop him with that head kick. There's another right cross. Yeah, Billy Q, man, looking great in that first round. He definitely won that one. See if he can keep it up here in the second. Counter jab does connect. Left jab, but Brown avoids it. Comes in, now looking to strike again. Looking for another combination, ended with a attempted head kick. Man, TJ Brown's in a lot of trouble here. Haven't really seen a whole lot from him. Counter jab doesn't connect either way, and now Brown falls for the feint. Hits him with a right to the side of the ribs. There's a jab and a right hook. God damn, I mean, he's just lighting him up, jab and a right hook again. J two jabs and a right. Man, Billy Q, he's running away with this round as well. Now he's got a, and he's opened him up now. Gash is the eye of TJ Brown. Two left jabs and a straight right. Boy, the boxing on display. Another round down for TJ Brown. He's going to have to get a finish. Cut man's got to stop the bleeding as well. Off target with the left jab, scores the right hook. That's a good start for DJ Brown, but uh, as far as Billy Q, he's wanting to keep on striking. He hasn't been stopped yet. He's getting tired, though. He's still landing shots. The left hand on the right to the body. Brown misses the right cross. Here comes the counter with a left hand. That reach advantage is proven too much for him. Looking to open up an attack now. Left jab. Brown evades the big right punch. Billy Q with the left hand. There's a wicked right uppercut, though, from TJ Brown. He knocked him down. What a fucking comeback this might be looking to finish the fight here and he does what a comeback for tj downtown brown you never down wow as uh what a comeback that was crazy i mean he was getting fucked up that entire fight i don't think he landed a he landed what four strikes yeah five strikes going into the last round then he landed the perfect one the uppercut caught him tough break for billy q man he was looking tremendous Gets caught, though, in the third round. That is tough. He name checks all of his sponsors and then thanks all of his fans who came out to support him. Says he's going to uh, celebrate his way behind to a local club and a victory party and everyone's invited. Now we got the Rebel. Go Kentucky. Then against slow Mike Rodriguez. So far, we've seen a lot of finishes so far tonight. Just in the first two fights, we'll see if we'll make it three in a row. Rodriguez with a glancing high kick. Connects clean with the right hand to Saki. There's a flurry of punches. That only one of them lands. It also misses the high kick. Nice little one-two there from Mike Rodriguez. A uh, left jab and a leg kick. Oh, there's a glancing blow with a high kick. God damn, Saki, though. He is landing those head kicks. He's not doing much power behind him, but he's landing so far. There's two jabs and a right hook from Rodriguez. Man, he's going for that high kick, though. He's only landing one strike out of that. Rodriguez is definitely looking like the better fighter. 
And there's our clean right hand from Rodriguez. Or was it a counter? Did I... Oh, no, he... Okay, yeah, he yeah, it was a jab and a right hand. The land is clean. There's a jab right out. It is uh, blocked. Now Saki, a well off target with a head kick as well, also missing with the jabs. Yeah, not looking too hot. Yeah, after the first round. Uh, Rodriguez probably won that round. If I had to guess, just from a feeling perspective, yeah, it was relatively close. Only a punch difference. Yeah, it's actually... Uh, yeah, they were tied. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I probably would have gave it to Rodriguez, though, too. Very, very close round. See what happens in the second. Off target with the left jab. Connects with the right hand. Oh, there's a high kick, though. Powerful one at that. And he knocked them down. Saki looking to finish it here in the second. And he does. Gokan Saki gets his win. 2-2 two and two now in his career. And he's 2-1 uh, in the UFC. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's exactly what he needed. Somebody that was going to stand up with him. He caught him in the second. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that would have stood up with him, though. So you got to praise uh, Mike Rodriguez for that. As he gives an intro there on a team bomb squad. All his favorite sponsors, all of his friends, family, and supporters. Now, as far as Zaleski Dos Santos against Randy Rude Boy Brown. 21-7, and 13-3, and three, minus 240 favorites for Randy Brown. He yeah, does have a fight camp as well. Dan Mergliata is our referee again. Cage side judges are off the crowd there for Randy Brown. They touch gloves. Dos Santos comes in. Brown hits a jab in the exchange. 1-2 from Dos Santos. It doesn't hit either of them. Left jab. Can't hit the right cross. Good right hand from Dos Santos now. Oh, gets countered. Does Dos Santos. He left wide open after the missed right hook to the ribs. It's kind of a clean right hand. It just scores with the jab. Misses the right cross. There's a left jab. Misses the right hook. Does this Randy Brown. Two quick punches, but it does. Zaleski Dos Santos showing good head movement, getting out of the way of those. Halfway point in the first round. There's a jab, but doesn't hit the right cross. There's a jab, misses the right hand. Both guys are hitting their setup strikes, but not really landing the big time strikes. Yeah, now Randy Brown doesn't hit any of those strikes. There's a glance, uh, there's a glancing blow off the high kick after the jab from Zaleski Dos Santos. Here comes Brown, though, with a great counter. It's a left jab and a great right hook. Minute left in the first. Quick left jab and a straight right off the counter. Randy Brown's doing a good job countering-wise. Dos Santos misses on that. Brown's left exposed. Now here comes a counter from uh, Zaleski Dos Santos. He gets, as uh, he lands the quick left jab at the right end, nearly fails to connect. Uh, you know, first round, Randy Brown did a little bit more. I'm cool with that as far as him being the winner of round one. See what happens in the second. Left jab misses the right hand. Does Randy Brown. So let's get Dos Santos with the left jab that's connected with the right hand. Move forward constantly is Aleska Dos Santos doing a really, really good job. Two counter left hands in exchange. Can't connect with the jab. Scores with their great high kick, though. Didn't even drop him, though. Didn't even rock him, even. You know, as far as Aleska Dos Santos still going forward. A couple of left hands. Minor left hands, uh, to be exact. But he misses the vicious right hand. Left hands come in from Brown. One, two from uh, Zaleska Dos Santos, but Brown avoids both, both of them, and now Dos Santos is off target the left jab, also wide of the mark of the head kick. He's looking to try and get something to go. Randy Brown looked for a takedown. Interesting strategy. Might as well try to change it up. And now Brown's got some dirty boxing going, but uh, Zaleski's able to uh, seize his chance to create some space and breaks free of it. 1-2 from Zaleska Dos Santos. That's a good 1-2 from Randy Brown. Both guys looking really good now with their striking as Brown misses the right hook. It's kind of the left jab and a good right hook. Uh, Zaleski Dos Santos might have won this round. This was very, very close. Yeah, neither fighter can really uh, blame anything as far as with the powerful strikes. But uh, there's Randy Brown with a couple of quick jabs. No power behind him, but he's trying. He yeah, doesn't trouble his opponent with a combination in with a high right head kick. Brown gets the takedown. Randy Brown might have uh, stolen that round after that takedown. I probably wouldn't say so. They're going to give it to him. Yeah, I mean, he did outstrike him. But it was only by, well... It's actually a lot more than just one. You hit a couple of strikes on the ground once you got the takedown. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, if you're Zaleski, Dos Santos' corner, you probably want to tell him to go for it. It might be 1-1, one, one, but probably not. You know, as far as you might as well try to go for the finish here in the third. But fighters, can, uh, they can't land anything. It's wild this went to distance, though. Potentially, at least. You never know. Jab lands, hits him with a straight right. Uh, Zaleski, Dos Santos, and Randy Brown are getting tired. A little good counter from Randy Brown with a jab and a right cross that just misses. Some dirty boxing now. 
Trying to get it up against the cage. They got it up against the cage. Looking pretty tired down these to the side of the ribs. Nice little nice short uppercut. I'm liking the grappling though. I'm liking the Muay Thai stuff. I'm liking it. You know the dirty boxing stuff as well. He's just doing a good job. On uh, having control here in the clinch. Damn Ergly is going to separate him. See what happens with 50 some seconds left in the fight. Brown's off target. Zelsky Dos Santos trying to throw a, a two punch combination. Couldn't get it though. Great counter from Randy Brown with a jab and a great right hook. Brown looking for another takedown. Selesky with a 1-2 doesn't land. And that's maybe a 30-27. Maybe 29-28. Yep, 30-27s. For Randy Brown. Tough break. I mean, Randy looked good. Uh, Zaleski, Dos Santos just couldn't really get anything going. Compared to uh, Randy Brown. Randy at least, you know, he doubled his strikes almost. He did a good job. Really, really good job. But yeah, that's just what a fight camp can, can get you. You know, as far as he, he was looking prepared. And he, he did a really good job. Sponsors are uh, supporting him financially. Thanks to them. He thanks his team. And praises Dos Santos for the tough fight. It's our main event in the prelim. The Magician, John Dotson, taking on Brian Boom Keller. Mark Lauda's referee again. Cage side judges. Brian gets a good reaction here. Let's see what we get from the uh, opening bell. As uh, coming in is uh, John Dotson. So it's a counter jab. But misses, 1-2. Keller avoids both of them. So far, both guys doing a pretty good job as far as avoiding each other's stand-ups. There's two counter jabs. That's a left hand from uh, Dotson. Let's see what they got here. Now we look at a great counter from Keller with a good right hook. There's a right cross from Dotson. Left jab can't hit the right cross. There's another straight left. Like in the southpaw stuff from Dotson. Keller says, fuck that shit. I'm taking him down. He slams him down. Takes his back. Oh no. Both hooks in. That's going to be it. Rear naked choke. First round finish. See you later, John Dotson. Uh, yeah. That was uh, that was pretty brutal. Mauled him, absolutely mauled him. Big win though for uh, Brian Kellerman or B Brian Keller rather, as he gets his twenty first victory. He wants to take on Kwong Hae Kong. A tough fight, tough tough fight. As he praises his team though with the bomb squad, it's been a nice night for the bomb squad uh, with two victories for him on the night so far. But yeah, he wants to fight Kwong Hong Kong. Now our uh, main card is Marina Rodriguez and Angela Hill. See what Angie can do. Margaret Atkins, our referee. See the only referee on this card. It's Angela Hill gets a good reaction. Enters from the arena, fighting from her home crowd. You go, they touch gloves. Hill throws a quick punch, doesn't land it. Hill looking to close the distance. But so is Marina uh, Rodriguez, but uh, Hill's aggressively took the initiative. Oh, shit, there's a stunning right hook. Knocked her down, how about that? I was talking all that shit. Angela Hill drops her in the first 30 seconds. What a win! 12 and 7. Well deserved win for Angela Hill. Damn, she's gonna retire? Damn. Come on, Angela Hill. Get a cup going. It's, uh, she gets an in check that run at the Alliance MMA. All of, his favorite, all of her favorite sponsors, all of her friends, family, and supporters. Angela Hill's a good talker and really does well in these sort of interviews. Damn. It's uh, Yanni Yaya. It's Al Jermaine Funkmaster Sterling. It's crazy that, uh, you know, Amanda Nunez in real life has retired. And here in the save, Angela Hill and Jennifer Maya have both retired before her. As I will see what Yanni can do. He's got a tough, tough, tough fight against Aljo. Mercury out again is a referee. Cage side judges. Here we go. Roar from the ground from Sterling. Sterling's backing off already. Jab lands from Yanni, uh, but Sterling avoids a big right. Does it again. Yeah, Sterling doesn't want to get caught so far. He's definitely respecting his striking. There's a low kick. Sterling with a jab, no power behind it at all. He's just fucking him up with these right hooks now. It's a big head kick that was wide of the mark, though. God, he just, Sterling has no, no comfortability in his striking at all. He's getting outworked already in this first round. Well, he got caught, though. Kick to the body, gets cut by Sterling, and now here's his chance to take him down. He's got him. Oh, but his neck was exposed, and he got... Oh, man, that is a rookie mistake there from Al Jermaine Sterling. You can't have that. Left his neck exposed. And he catches him with the guillotine, and that's his 28th victory. That's a veteran move right there. You can't leave that neck exposed. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> as uh, That's a tough break for Al Jermaine Sterling. As for Ani, yeah, yeah, as far as he raises his team at Constrictor Team, his various sponsors all fans can support him as he asks who you like to fight next. He answers that he'll fight against, he thinks a fight against uh, Thomas Almeida would be a particularly great contest. 
Let's see what the hammer can do against Alexander Rajic. He is the heavy favorite, minus 500 UFD gym, grappling Krakow, I believe. I'm telling you pronounce that, but the Mergliata's are free. There we go. I mean, just a busy, busy man at Dan Mergliata. Yeah, giving up a lot of height. He's, uh, though he is bigger than him, at least heavy set wise. He's probably fight around 215, maybe even 220. Roger for the left cross. Nice little combination here from the hammer. A nice little one, two. It's a quick right, straight left. Left jab. And uh, misses, oh, he missed the left jab. It lands the right hook, though, rather. Right jab, hits the right hook to the body. Left counter with the left hand here from Roger. She lands the right hand, and then hit, catches Roger with a spin kick to the body. As Michael scores with a blow, or with a jab, rather, and scores a glancing blow with a left head kick. Man, they're looking for the head kicks already. Gash beneath the eye of, of the hammer. See, so he lands the right jab, doesn't reach, then the hook to the body. Yeah, I mean, Roger, good job of keeping it going, but I mean, Michael's looking good. He's not looking like a plus 350 underdog, that's for sure. He's coming after it. Big left hand. Both fighters are, uh, you know, strike, but uh, throw, but they can't lay anything. Now, you know, as far as Michael's looking confident. That's a big thing, is confidence when you're an underdog like that. And now they're going to check on Michael's cut. It's not a fight ender, thank God. Back underway. Oh, and he gets caught with a head kick. Well, that's him. Knocked him down. Looking to finish the fight. Oh, Michael's hanging on. He might survive. I think he will. Yeah, transitions away too. And now, yeah, calmly deals with him. So he hangs on for another round. Roger caught him after the restart. Let's see what happens in the second. It's a jab in the exchange. Misses the... Or he uses the right jab right there. But the left head kick that follows up misses. Counter jab. Now Michael swings and misses on all these combinations. And then with the head kick goes for it again. He's kind of looking a little desperate now. Roger knows he's won that first round. Just looking for his opportunity. And there it is. A vicious head kick. Knocks him down again. Looking to finish the fight. This time in the second. And he does. Mercury is going to stop the fight. Now Alexander Roger wins by TKO. Tough break for the hammer there. He was looking good. That restart. Locked over everything. And uh, once he got caught. he uh, yeah, The desperation kind of kicked in. And. Downhill after that. He thanks everyone connected to UFT Gym, does Alex and Roger, and helping him prepare for the fight, and his sponsors for supporting him financially as well. So our co-main event, Michael the Menace Johnson against Frankie the Answer Edgar. We'll see what the Springfield, Missouri native can do against the Toms River, New Jersey native, and the Answer, Frankie Edgar. Herb Dean's a referee, there we go. Okay, Jai judges, there we go, we're underway. Touch gloves. Edgar is a Counters the hesitant body shot. So quick left jab, right hooks up. That is ducked. Well, look at the counters already. There's a clean left hand from Michael Johnson. That jab can hit the right cross. Right jab also nails the left cross. Oh, and he rocked him with that. Oh, man. Looking for the flying knee. Couldn't do it, though. Edgar staggered, but he's not dropped. Oh, he hits him. Holy shit. Didn't land cleanly enough. Oh, my God. Now he's trying to capitalize on the massive left hand. Edgar avoids it. Here's Frankie Edgar for you. He's not going to give up on himself. Oh my god. Here's some 1-2 from Michael Johnson. A nice right hook from Edgar. And he gets rocked again. Oh my god. A left hand to the jaw knocked him down. Not going to finish the fight as Michael Johnson. Frankie Edgar is a menace though. He can't get put away. He's still surviving. Oh my god. Now as far as he's trying to pull guard. That's not happening. Yeah, Michael Johnson. You don't want to get too eager here because you might have 10 8 him you know you dropped him twice they're gonna give it a 10 9 to michael johnson that was uh i would probably 10 8 that one to be honest yeah that's wild two knockdowns in a single round that's a 10 8 round both fighters being the center right jab doesn't connect though with the left does uh, michael johnson there's a left jab doesn't hit the right hand either left hook from frank yeager off the with a jab lands the left hook that's a left hand from edgar Jab and a right, oh, a nice one two from Johnson again. Right jab, left hook. Man, he's doing a good job. He, that combination just has been working really well. There's a left hook from Johnson this time. Counter from Johnson with a jab and a left cross. Yeah, this reach advantage is, is really making it tough on Frankie Edgar. He's able to, to cut him. He's able to, you know, just not really be in any type of danger. He's able to slip a lot of these shots, which he does here. Slipping past the right hook and counters with the right hook of his own. This time to the side of the body. 
Yeah, Frankie hasn't went down though in this round at least. We'll see if that might change the minute left. Oh, there's a massive left hook on the jaw. Yep, knocked him down again. Look at the finish of the fight. Is Herb going to stop it? Finally, Herb stops the beatdown. In the second round, the menace. Michael Johnson gets the win. 20th victory. How about that? Frank Edgar. I, I just, you know, the guy's got a heart of a fucking lion, but he can't. <laughs> he just, he can't do it at, at featherweight. The guys are too big for him. So he gives the name check to run at Hard Knocks 365. All his favorite sponsors, all of his, all of his uh, friends, family, and supporters. It says, a tough fight, though. Gives a sure respect to Frank Yeager. Our main event. Getting the highlight. Justin Gaethje pull it off. Or we see Gregory, the, uh, the Gregor, rather. Gregor, the uh, gift. Gillespie. Get the win. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Gillespie. Minus 150. Favorite. Plus 150 underdog is Gaethje. So goddamn close. I gotta go with Gaethje, though. Got to. Mazgatti's our referee. Gage side judges here. Five-round fight, of course, being it in the main event. Here we go. Let's go up. So appear to be going in for a takedown with Gaethje. Tries to put a stop to it. There's a flurry of three punches coming in. This is the big right hand, though. And there's a great timing from Gillespie. Single legs. Got him. He's gonna lay and pray on him. Nope, it's a scramble. Here we go. Eh, Gillespie's just gonna get him against the cage. Trying to dirty box him now. Short left uppercut from Galepsia. That's good. Yeah, a couple of sh nice uh, right hands to the side of the head. And there's a short left uppercut now. Gaethje finally gets out of it. And Galepsia with another takedown. Well, great start. Two takedowns, yeah. 10 9 Galepsia. And going for it again. Now he's got it. Single leg. Look at the pass. He was ready for it. another scramble. And we're just a little deja vu here. But as far as it looks like, at least. Um, and he wrestles Freeman back to the center. There we go. So we're back to standing. Gaethje's still trying to unleash some strikes. Avoids the big right hand as Gillespie. And he might get him with another takedown. God damn it. Gaethje can't stop the takedowns. Just another scramble again. Oh, he's got a waist lock now. Oh, he's hitting some heavy shots now. He's got his back. That's not good. Yeah, going to stand him up. Looking for the trip. Another takedown again. Oh, but loses impact already once he lands it down on him, so here comes another scramble. Gillespie's on his back now. Trying to sweep. Now Gaethje doing a good job stand-up, or just on top-wise. And he's trying to, you know, not get caught again, but again, slamming that shoulder into Gillespie's face. That was a good end of the round. Still a 10-9 round, but still a lot of time left. As here we go. Again, Gillespie avoids the big right punch. Can't land that big shot. Gillespie's going to get another takedown. Six for six on these takedowns. Unreal. So scramble again. Skagey able to get back up. But, you know, Gillespie's up first, so he's going to be able to maybe German suplex him. Holy shit. Got the grip he needed. Knocked him down. But Gillespie's just uh, turned up against him, so we'll see what happens. Gillespie's too slow to stop Gaethje from starting to scramble, so now he's back to his feet. Gillespie's still behind him, and it's another takedown. He's got side control off it. Looking for the arm triangle. Not happening either. God damn. I mean, there's been a complete beatdown of poor Justin Gaethje as far as wrestling wise. Yeah, Gaethje's now out of rounds. He's got to go for the finish. And Gillespie finally gets stopped. But, I mean, he's still in control. So he's got him against the cage. A couple of north, uh, nice short right punches to the side of the head. Got him still against the cage. Trying to flick some dirty boxing. And now Gaethje circles away out of there. Gaethje's starting to get tired. So is Gillespie, though. Yeah, he looked like he was angling for a takedown. Couldn't take the initiative. That yeah, catches him with the right hook. Here we go. Gaethje's starting to show a little good hand speed now. He lands one shot. And he misses the big right head. Oh, head kick, though, unfortunately. And Gillespie now takes his opportunity to get his ninth out of his tenth takedowns. Another scramble, though. And Gillespie's just going to... Try to keep him down as long as he can. He's throwing for a knee strike. Preparing for the knee strike, rather. Gaethje was able to spring right back up. Gaethje two left hands. And he gets another takedown to end out the fourth. Well, final round. He needs a finish. Yeah, and there's a great takedown again from Gillespie. As uh, Gaethje, he couldn't stop him. Could not stop him. But once he gets down there, though, Gaethje's done a good job of getting back up. Now Gillespie looking for a north-south. Oh, he got it! 
How about that? It doesn't go the distance. He gets him in the fifth with the rear, na with the uh, north south rather. We don't see that every day. What a win! That is, I mean, that was a massive victory for Gregory Galepsi. I mean, he was in there with a hell of a striker, and he wants Edson Barbosa next. He wants to run through all these strikers, I guess. Well, goddamn. As any praises team in Long Island MMA, it's very sponsors, all the fans can support them. Yeah, man, that was a great performance from him. That was a pretty good show. It was pretty, yeah, besides the uh, shocking Sterling caught of the uh, guillotine. In which, uh, even then, all the main cards had finishes. Actually, all of them, but one card, uh, one fight on this entire card was a finish. That was a really fun card. Hell yeah. Creased it a little bit, only by a point of a percentage, but hey, at least it's uh, better going backwards. I mean, yeah, we gotta give... Galepsi some love. I mean, we gotta give Melinda Fabian some love. That was crazy. Same thing for TJ Brown. What a comeback. And, uh... Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. Probably it. And we made a million and a half. A little under a million and a half. A couple of people made a hundred thousand. A couple of people just made like ten, twenty thousand. That's kind of tough. Hate to see that. And the Bellator card. Not a bad show. Not a bad show at all. That was uh, that was a lot of fun to see. Some big time upsets. Some big time wins. Michael Johnson beating Frank Yeager. Gregory Lefsey running right through Justin Gaethje. Pretty shocking performance. Uh, yeah, I mean that was wild. He's uh, he's a man to beat right now. As far as Gregory uh, or Gregory Gillespie, I always want to say Gregory because uh, Gillespie, man, it's a tough dude. Tough guy. You know, those wrestlers like that, that are just relentless. It's tough. Tough, tough, tough. So the next card, I believe, is a 253 card. Yes, it is. Then we're going to, to the line down under for UFC 253, for Whitaker, Adesanya 2, for, uh, you know, obviously Holloway and uh, Volkanovski 2. Should be a lot of fun. Then we got the Fight Night card with uh, Tabora and Overeem. They go back to uh, Abu Dhabi for the Fight Island card. Jan Bohovic against uh, Anthony Smith. Then uh, Anderson Silva and Joel Romero. That's going to be a fun card. That's a ESPN Plus card. Then uh, we're going to the California... Oh, we're going to the... Uh, yeah, I was about to say the Sunshine State, but I think that's actually New Jersey. Uh, but yeah, that's... Um, that's going to be a fun... F that's going to be a big fight, though. Kaylin Chikagan going up. To look to become a double champion. So it's the battle of uh, either someone's going to stay a double champ or someone is going to become a double champion. So that's going to be a lot of fun to see. Bit of a uh, super fight, if you will. And also Aspen Ladd and Ketlin Varreros, the co-main. Winner of that will probably take on the winner of this. We also have Josh Yemen and Chan Sung Jung on the card. Tony Ferguson's on the card. Brunson and Caslam's on that card as well. So it yeah, should be... A lot of fun, and I will catch you guys next time, though. Take care, everyone.